Workers earning the living wage are getting a financial boost today. The wage, which is voluntary and has been around since 2013, aims to give people a better quality of life. It's risen 35 cents an hour from $20.20 20 to 2055. Jonathan Mitchell reports. On an unusually sunny and calm April day in central Wellington, I meet Lara Denby, who's starting another shift at the Rogan Vagabond Bar, where she's been working for just over a year. She's being paid the living wage and says the extra few dollars an hour means she's enjoying life a lot more and not just living week to week on the minimum wage. It's definitely made money stresses less of a thing. It's easier to pay my rent. I know that, you know, when I go to the supermarket, I don't have to be buying all the cheapest things that I possibly can. Yeah, it's definitely made my life much more convenient and easier and, yeah, just less stressful. Ms Denby can't imagine what it's like for families trying to live on a single income, earning the minimum wage. She says more businesses should get on board with the living wage. 100%, yeah, I don't see why people wouldn't. Of course, I, I understand what some people's hang-ups are about it, but they're irrelevant when it comes down to just basic human decency and giving people, you know, what they need to live. Her boss, Gwilym Waldron, made the switch to paying the living wage to his employees a few months ago. Wellington is expensive, I and mean, New Zealand in itself is expensive across the board for, for everything. In, I mean, I, I worked for years in Australia, and over there, people earn more money, and things are cheaper. You come to New Zealand, you know, people are struggling just to just to live, you know. He says it makes economic and social sense to pay that extra amount. I, I don't think there's any thought to be had into it. You just have to get on board and pay the living wage. There's, they've got a concept of um, if staff are not earning the living wage, basically they're subsidising your business with their standard of living. And once you get that concept, you, you can't continue to pay under the living wage. His business is one of around 100 that are accredited to pay the rate. The Living Wage National Convener Annie Newman says there are more than 600,000 workers who don't earn enough to survive and are living in poverty. She says today's higher rate has been calculated after a major review. It takes into account the Household Economic Survey data from Stats New Zealand and then it's added this year, which is a bit different, a number of other data sets that have become available and that includes transport, health and a couple of other things so that it's really much more closely aligned to what workers need rather than just what they spend. Today's rise follows an increase in the minimum wage of $16.50 an hour which came into effect on April the 1st. But Annie Newman says the living wage is unlikely to be made compulsory. The living wage is independent of government, so any compulsory regime would be introduced by government. Um, I think that the significant increase that we've seen in the minimum wage is a sign that the government is recognising that the current minimums are too low. And that's a good sign because they are too low. Back at the Rogan Vagabond, Lara Denby says she'll put any extra income she earns from today towards her OE. For Checkpoint, Jonathan Mitchell.